Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the Court. The Court of Appeals held that Section 207 of PREA was unconstitutional because it believed that the statute constituted an actual delegation of regulatory authority to a private entity. And none of those three things is true about this statute. If we were to rule that this is not a regulatory action, um, would that satisfy the entire case? We wouldn't have to go to the delegation issue or to the, whether it was public or private, et cetera. I, I think that that's right. And I think even in those circumstances, because it, because if it is not regulatory, it's okay for private persons to have that power. I think that would cover even the question of whether if, if the arbitrator is assumed to be private. But if the, if the actions are not regulatory, why, why did Amtrak's performance uh, drop dramatically? as soon as the Court is issued its decision in this case. I think that the, it is the statutory preference that is having the regulatory impact here. Amtrak can then force a proceeding at which the freight carriers will have to defend, right? That, that is correct. And the same well, thing — Well, that's a significant uh, uh, regulatory impact to tell it, the railroads, I, a private party, get to start a governmental proceeding and you have to show up to defend it. Uh, yes. And by the way, that, that's if I don't it, — it's triggered if I don't comply with standards — that I get to set. It, but we allow private parties to initiate governmental investigations and enforcement proceedings all the time, either before administrative agencies or courts, and we don't think that that is a delegation of legislative power M- Mr. to Bannon, the person who is beginning the investigation. Is the, um, is the government able to award damages without the showing that there's been a violation of the metrics and standards? No. Well, you know, I'm quite be. interested in the government's view of this case, and I hope you will calm me down. The reason that I find it interesting is because it seems to me there are hundreds, maybe thousands, of organizations that set standards for the industry. And some of them operate under government memoranda or authority that ask them to do it. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the Court. The Constitution does not permit Congress to create a corporation, deem it non-governmental, then launch it into the commercial sphere with a for-profit mandate, and then vest it with regulatory authority over other companies in the same industry. Look at the animal as it exists. I mean, uh, Lebron said that the government exerts control over Amtrak as a policymaker. It is that this impact, you will agree, is not like a private corporation. It's, there's a great deal of federal involvement in Amtrak, right? I agree. Mr. Gannon is unable to explain why this magical change didn't occur until the metrics and standards came well, into effect. he said and the, the metrics and standards for the first time made it realistic that there would be enforcement of that requirement. Well, uh, first, I would say if that's true, that to me strikes me as a pretty plain regulatory effect and that the metrics and standards are on the books and the freight railroads know that they now need to comply or they're going to face enforcement actions. I think think you can allow a private party to bring an enforcement action. You can allow a private party. I mean, even if they just said uh, an enforcement action shall be commenced if Amtrak requests it, I think that would be perfectly constitutional. I, I, I agree, Justice Scalia, but at the same time, the problem here is that Congress has given Amtrak the power to define the terms and to draft the regulations in which it may bring an enforcement action. Thank you, counsel. The case is submitted.